everybody. Welcome outside Vancouver Public Schools. I'm Nick Vole. Every spring, Skyview High School holds its Bolt event, which brings together kids and staff members to tell personal stories to explain who they are. Of course, this year they can't do it in the amphitheater, so they've come up with a creative solution. And joining me now is teacher Meredith Wales. We've also got Jenna Griffin and Jessica Moore, students at Skyview. Guys, thanks for being here. Thank you for having us. So let's get right into it. What exactly is Bolt and how did it start? So Bolt is intended to be like a TED Talk style presentation that my leadership class delivers to our school every year. And this is the first uh, time that we've had to sort of take it out of the auditorium session. Normally it's a full day of different assemblies where we have students and staff and alumni come back um, and present on stage. This is the fifth annual Bolt um, and the first one that uh, has been done so creatively. Sure. So what was the genesis of this event? Where did it start? Now, I think everybody knows that Skyview is a really, really big school, and it's easy, I think, for students to feel a little bit lost in the shuffle. Um, when I was working on curriculum for my very first leadership class about five years ago and trying to think about what would be the most beneficial for not just my class to challenge them, but my entire student body, um, we kept coming back to the tagline, Skyview stands as one. And I did a lot of polling of my students in our first leadership class that year. And as a joke, somebody said, Skyview stands as 2100. Um, they felt that we were not super unified and there was more that we could do as a class and as an entire school to relate to each other better. And that's really where it started. Okay, how do we make ourselves feel like we know the people walking by us in the hall we have an idea about the things they've gone through or their perspectives or their talents or their secret passions. So Bolt is really a platform for putting those out there on display so we can relate to each other a little better. So then Jenna and Jessica, as students, do you feel like this event has improved sort of cohesion at Skyview? Yeah, I, I do personally. I like, I used Bolt, especially like my first year doing it, I was a sophomore. I, I used Bolt kind of as this way of showing who I was to people who I maybe didn't know, who maybe saw a certain version of me in school. Um, Cause at the time I was a swimmer, I was an athlete and I was performing musically. And so I kind of used that to show off the two different uh, personalities that I had, the two different skill sets that I had. And that actually ended up leading to me wanting to do leadership because I had Bolt had such a profound effect on my like happiness and all of that. So, Yeah, I would definitely agree. Um, I think Bolt has this uh, unique ability of just unifying everyone, um, whether people realize it or not. From my own personal experience and from what I've heard about people, every time I've watched it, there's at least been at least three performances where I just sit there and I'm like, I can really relate to them and I didn't know I could relate to them or I didn't know anyone else was feeling that way or I didn't know anyone else could relate to what I was going through or what I felt so it just created this bond like I'm really not alone and someone else is really out there uh, but also putting it on this year I could see other people and how much they can relate to it and how much they enjoy it and even our performers they're just like they are shocked by their own ability of putting themselves out there. And it's just amazing to see. Sure. So you guys are talking about performances. What kind of performances can viewers expect or can your student body expect? So a lot of our performances are speeches. So we get speeches of people who talk about their struggles or maybe a singular event that happened to them. And it's a very Ted talk style speech. Sometimes they have like, other mediums that they bring into it. And then there's also musical performances, such as like singing, playing guitar, performing, stuff like that. And that's what I did my first year. I actually did a speech for this performance and I'm showing off a video that I made. So, you know, there it's a wide variety. There's no one way to have a performance. I would add too that we always encourage our students to think outside of the box when we're auditioning or spreading the word about what Bolt might contain. The cool thing about teaching a class like leadership where I don't have any repeat students in any years, 
We start with a clean slate every year. So Bolt is really what the leadership class that year envisions it to be. They create the theme, the logo, they audition people, they decide sort of what the attitude is they wanna convey, and then that helps shape what the event will look like that year. Sure. Well, I've seen Bolt in the past, and I'm always amazed at how personal some of these performances are. I mean, are you ever amazed or surprised at how much people are willing to share and how much trust does it take to create an environment where that's okay? Uh, I would definitely say that it, you have to have a special bond, um, especially when it comes to auditions. I remember I sat in, and up, in on a couple auditions uh, and hearing people's stories and even just their rough draft. I was like, I cannot believe that you are sharing that. And I was amazed at how brave they were. But in the end, it, when I've asked them, like, how did you find the courage to do this? It comes down to they feel it's they say, if I can help at least one person, it's worth it. So really, it comes down to who they are. And they just want to make sure that their story is heard so that they can help someone else. Because a lot of the really personal stories that we hear um, come from a place of people not getting the help that they needed and not being able to reach out and not knowing that people around them also were experiencing things like that. So when it comes down to it, it's just if they can help someone else, then they're fine with it. And I know two uh, staff members are often participants in this event too. It's kind of unique. It's not it's like the recognition that the Skyview community isn't just the kids, it's the parent, you know, the teachers too, it's everybody. Um, how has the staff uh, sort of reacted to this event over the years as it's grown? Um, well, coming from a staff member perspective, I usually put the feelers out pretty early to try to encourage people who I know have maybe a unique life experience or something that they can do that they don't normally share with their student body. Uh, I want to try to spotlight that for a minute. I think that there's a lot of um, understanding and respect that we get from understanding the people around us at a deeper level. And so I usually throw out some names, but we do some outreach as an entire class to all of the staff and faculty. And it's sort of a matter of who bites. There are people who are ready um, and they put themselves out there and say, oh yeah, you know, for instance, I have a speech I'd like to give. And then there might be other teachers who need a little encouragement or they say, well, I don't know if I really wanna do this or I'm too nervous. And usually some conversations with our class lead most of them to say, okay, fine, I'll do it. Um, for instance, that happened this year with a teacher who is playing classical piano and she hasn't really shared that with anybody, um, was very, very nervous uh, because she knows that people have assumptions that they make about everybody. Um, and it was a little bit vulnerable, but she stepped up and, and really pulled it off. It's kind of intriguing to me because thinking back to myself as a high schooler, you don't always view teachers as three-dimensional human beings. So from a student perspective, has this humanized some of your teachers a little bit? Is it easier to see them as not just this authority figure, but like, you know, a person? 100%. We don't see this side of teachers at all because we're too busy learning, like, reading, writing, any of that. We, we don't see how they act outside of this classroom. We don't see anything. We don't share that with them. They don't share with us because we're too busy learning. And so to see that is a very interesting phenomenon. It's almost, it's strange, but like a good kind of strange. It's just, it's a really nice feeling to know that your, uh, your teachers are like humans too. And they're, you know, they're like us. So. Yeah. So typically Bolt is in the auditorium. People can come down, sit in the auditorium, watch. Obviously everything's different this year. Could you guys talk about how you've adjusted the event to keep up with our current times? And um, was that a challenge for you? Yes. <laughs> so I'm, I am the editor of the Bolt videos that we've done. And so when we found out, you know, Bolts is no longer going to be available for the school, we talked about, okay, we have to do a video. And as a third year video production student, um, I was the person to go to for video and all of that. And trying to get people to send in videos is infinitely harder than trying to get people to perform 
on a stage because it is a very, it's a much more intimate setting. People, you know, you're much closer. It's not like, it's not like, oh, I'm, I'm just performing one time. It's like people can watch it over and over again. And so we had a lot less people who were willing to share a video than they were to do a live performance. And so trying to get technology to work as well. Like I've had, as you can tell, I've had Chromebook problems. I've had, you know, people who are unable to share the Google link, uh, the Google Drive stuff. And we've managed to pull it off and it actually looks pretty good, but it's been a big challenge on the technological side alone, not to mention people being uncomfortable with sharing a video. When we were in school, um, a lot of our, our like multimedia promotions was still on social media. However, a lot of it was just making sure we had the headshots and making sure we got their quotes and kind of just making sure that everything was going to run smoothly by um, around April time. We weren't really that focused on like putting too much stuff out there. A lot of the stuff that we were putting out there was more so for the performers. And then school was shut down and I went to go see Miss Wells and I said, what do I do? Do I present them? Do I not present them? Do What do I do? <laughs> I don't know what to do. Um, so she said to just hold off because we don't know what's going to happen. Um, and so then when online school was announced, uh, I met up with the two other people that I coordinate with, which is Aaron and Caleb. And we just sat down and we had to figure everything out with we didn't know exactly how many people were gonna participate in the online vault, and we didn't know when it was gonna happen, but we still had to release all of the presenters. So basically, as soon as people were signing up, we were sending them out to online saying that they're the presenters. Um, and then as soon as we got our deadline, then we were able to kind of uh, choreograph like when and how much we were gonna post. Uh, so it kind of just was like, as things were coming in, then we would have to figure out where they were gonna go and when they were gonna go. Um, and now that it's coming out, a lot that we focus on is just making sure that people are coming back on the Fridays and finding the links okay. Um, so throughout the beginning of the weeks, we do this like recap in the beginning and we show all the people who performed on the Friday and we say, you know, who was your favorite? And then by the middle of the week, we say, you know, we give something else. And then by the end of the week, we say, okay, this episode is live, go check it out. So that's kind of how it runs online now, now that it's strictly like stuck to online promotion, it kind of fell all on the multimedia team, so yeah. It's sort of ironic that an event to bring people together is happening now at a time when we are all physically distanced from one another. Um, how proud are you guys of the role you're playing in kind of keeping the Skyview community connected? I'm myself and like, I'm very proud of the role that I've gotten to play because like in the past, you know, the multimedia team is, uh, so I was also on the multimedia team. I've kind of more moved on to my own little category now, but before I was on the multimedia team and part of me was like, okay, this is kind of a less involved. This is a more behind the scenes look. This is a much more, you know, oh, we just post on social media. We, we work on like releasing the slides and doing all of this. And it was kind of a more laid back role. And then all of a sudden we get thrust into this, all of a sudden multimedia is the front runner. Multimedia is the only team that can do stuff. Promotions was off doing posters and now we can't do that anymore. And it was this kind of almost like when that first video was finished and I finished it and I like got it shared and we went live. It was one of the like the coolest feelings I'd ever like experienced myself because I had never been able to actually feel that before that proud, like, Hey, I did that. I made that video. I edited it. I worked really hard. I collaborated with people. It was a very, I, I felt very proud of the leadership class, but mostly me because I did so much work on it. <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, and I would say I could not believe after the first episode and the second episode and all the episodes, honestly, uh, after they're all released, like, I can't believe that our class was able to turn it around so fast because uh, we are the smallest leadership class that there has been. And we already, in October when we started planning it, we were like, this is going to be a challenge to pull off because we are a class of 17 kids and we are trying to pull off an entire show. Um, so this is going to be hard, but we can do it. 
And then all of a sudden we were like, okay, there's no physical show, but we're still going to do it. Every, I don't think there was a single person who said, I don't think we should do bull. Everyone was like, no, we still need to do it. It's something that needs to be done. Um, Cause we had all worked so hard over the year and we wanted to continue it. Um, it was for, it's for everyone. It's for everyone in Skyview. It's for us. It's for the whole community. So I am extremely proud of our entire class for that. I think there's another irony here too, that um, my students had their own brainstorming session. They discussed and they decided in October that they wanted the theme to be breaking barriers. And this is the ultimate barrier. I mean, not having physical school, not being able to meet up, having to try to cobble things together remotely and reimagine the event is a huge barrier. And the theme originally was to speak to sort of the, the facades and the barriers we put up to being authentic. But I think this double meaning too of we're facing these unprecedented experiences and yet our students are still able to reach out, to connect to each other, to build stronger bridges between them and their classmates and their, their teachers and the staff in the building. I think it says a lot about this generation of young people, um, their ability to be change makers, to buck the status quo, and to try to solve problems um, when it seems like there are some insurmountable obstacles. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. Great job on getting this project together, and I look forward to watching the rest of your Bolt. Thanks thank so much. Thank Appreciate you. it. And if you want to find the website with all of the videos on it, it's kind of a long URL, but you can see it on your screen there. Or it might be easier for you to go onto Twitter and look up SHS Bolt, or just Google Skyview High School Bolt, and you should find it fairly easily. And that's it for us. Thanks for watching Outside Vancouver Public Schools. Until next time, I'm Nick Bolt.